Hi there, this is David from AppWorks, and I've got another video for you. Today it's just one of our FileMaker basics, and today we're going to talk about exporting records. Uh, there's really two ways to do it. One of them is the really easy way where you just have a set of records here, and you go up to the File menu and you hit Export Records. It just asks you for location and what type of file you want to use. Um, you can actually export a FileMaker Pro file of these records. It'll just be a basic table. Excel workbook is uh, super useful. Comma separated values is pretty universal. That's the one we're going to use today. So um, that's the easiest way to do it right here is just from the pull down menu. But what we really want to show is how to do this in a script because there are going to be times where you want to have a button here that just says export these records. Um, the basic script step involved is the script step called export records. And um, <clears throat> all it does really is take your found set and spits it out, does the same thing that this export records uh, uh, file menu um, item does. And uh, then you can do other things though with it. You can specify where it's supposed to go ahead of time, what the file name is supposed to be ahead of time, and uh, make it a little easier for your user to interact with, uh, improve their user experience. So if I just run this script with the debugger on, you'll see that uh, it's got its most basic format right here. It just exports the records with dialog on, which means we're going to see a dialog box. Um, and create folders off just is means it's just going to um, spit out a file. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to show a custom dialog that says the export's complete. And you'll see it looks just like the drop-down menu. We're going to choose... Um, comma separated values, and we're going to put it on the desktop and we're going to make a name. Uh, and it's just going to be called file.csv. And if I hit save, now it brings up this specify field order for export. We can choose the company name, you just double click it, or you can uh, hit move all, and it will move all of the uh, fields over from the table uh, or the layout, and it'll put them over here in the export. Um, and then you can actually drag these up and down by these little arrows to determine what order they are exported. So basically you're determining the column order. Um, you can actually group them if you want to sort them by something, uh, but we're not going to get into that today. So if I just hit export and then I continue the script, now we get a dialog that says export is complete. Okay. Now if we go over to here, we'll see on the desktop that there's a file called file CSV. And you can see it's got the company names, the city, and the state. You can open this with any number of um, applications. But what we really want to get into here is a little bit more of the details of what some of these settings are. So um, the export order, if you have just made an export using a script, uh, when you go into the settings here, it'll actually default to the last order that you specified. So if you've done a complex export manually uh, and you want to use the same settings, then go right into your script and edit it from there and it'll end up the same. Otherwise, you can clear these and do uh, something different if you want. Um, address, city, and zip. And so now we've got a, a new export order. And because we're doing this in the script settings, it will be saved. And so the next time, they don't have to specify. We'll hit OK. Um, and now, if we run this, you'll see it gives us the dialog. Doesn't set the name or the type because we didn't specify that. And now you'll see that it's already set the way we want it. We can hit export, and that's done. And if we look at this file, oh, that's the old file, and here's the new file. So we didn't specify a name. It will actually overwrite this file if we use the same name. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, the next part we want to do is actually put a name to this file automatically. So the best thing to do here is to start by setting a variable. And you can call this file. And you can specify the file name. And let's just put in something like uh, file. CSV. You could actually put in something like file uh, ampersand get 
current date, ampersand, and uh, now it'll say file and a date in CSV. So that can be handy. So you can really specify, whoops. Uh, I did something wrong here. There we go. Um, and you can really manually create a an export. You can use field names. You can use uh, various functions to construct a file name any way you want. The next thing we want to do is actually set the path for where this is going to be exported to. So we're going to set another variable. You can actually do this all in one, but we're going to do it in two separate ones. It's a little bit more um, verbose, but uh, it's sort of self-documenting that way. So in this case, we're going to go get desktop path, and we're going to use uh, the file variable that we just created in the step before. So now you've got um, a path to the desktop and a file name that we can use for exporting. So when you go to this export records step, now we can specify the output file. There's various ways that you can do this. Uh, as you can see here, there's relative paths, full paths, variable names, and you can kind of choose any one of these you want. If you want to replace a file regularly, you can actually choose one, um, and uh, it'll actually update that file every time. But in this case, we're just going to go dollar $path. And we want comma separated values. Um, otherwise, we'll have a file that's misnamed as a tab file. And we actually have called it a CSV. So um, that is all you have to do for that. And if we run this, you'll see what happens here. So now we've got a variable called whoops, file. And that's the file name. And here's the path. Here's the full file name and the file path. And then we hit export, and it didn't work. So you'll see here that we have uh, get last error, or the last error is error 800, unable to create file on disk. So this actually brings me to my next point here. It just said export is complete, and yet we didn't complete the export. So let's go into our script and add an error capture step. So set error capture, and we want that to be on. And then when we get to this error message, we can check for it if it didn't export correctly for some reason, um, or if, for example, the user cancels as they're deciding to export, they decide that they don't actually want to do it, uh, then you can capture for that and say something like export failed. So we're going to go uh, if get last error show custom dialog export failed whoops not filed failed get rid of that and hit OK and then we can go else show custom dialog export is complete. Now I think the problem with that um, was that our file name was not very good. So using this get current date actually messed it up because it had uh, slashes in it, I believe. So we're going to just call it file.csv. Hit save and now we'll test it again. So now when we run through this script, you'll see that we set a variable of files just called file.csv and we get the path and now we go export records to this path. You can see that the fields are already set up. Hit export. There was no error, and so export is complete. And now we're done. And if we look at this file, you'll see here's the one we just exported, file.csv, and there's all the data we exported. That's the basics. Um, there are some other little things you can do with this. Um, but I think that's really all you need to know for this particular basics. Uh, you can find more documentation on FileMaker's website. And uh, you can add some questions in the comments here if you want to. And we can get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, so thanks for watching. And hope you watch some more of our videos.